right, welcome back to Bayou Time. Uh, thank you for joining us once again. And uh, as mentioned, we are joined by world-renowned cardiologist, uh, Dr. Craig Walker. He's the founder, president, and medical director, of course, of Cardiovascular Institute of the South. Dr. Walker, welcome back to the set uh, here on Bayou Time. We always enjoy the visits with you, but uh, very special visit uh, talking about uh, you know, a new procedure that was performed, and of course you should be commended because uh, you're the first in the world to perform this new particular procedure to treat uh, PAD, and uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. And, uh, but, but I guess the first question that I would have is, you know, A, what, what, what type of procedure was it, and then what uh, necessitated this type of procedure and, and advancement in, in the treatment? Sure. Peripheral arterial disease or blockage of leg arteries is a big problem. In the early stages, people hurt when they walk. They can't simply walk as much as they would like because legs cramp. But in the worst stages of the disease, they develop ulcers or gangrene, and that's what leads people to have amputations. And we have long been leaders throughout the world in, in trying to uh, lessen the risk of going on to have amputation and to improve people's lives that have peripheral arterial disease. Uh, we've worked with companies to develop new products over the years in an effort to better treat uh, this problem. And this was one of uh, the collaborative projects that we had with a company in the past to develop a product that would allow us to better clean out uh, stents that had been blocked up by material that grows inside of a stent that has been placed. And this product is called the Turbo Power Catheter. I brought some slides so that I can show you the difference between this and some of the standard laser uh, projects is that this laser fiber has a wire lumen or a wire channel off to one side, and it has a little motor that spins it back and forth. Now, in doing that, it allows us to clean out an artery much more effectively, but rather than just pushing it in one dimension. If I can see the next slide here, we can see that as compared with some of the older technologies like the turbo power, the turbo booster seen here on the left, which was a ramp, and we also were the first in the world to use that in the past, uh, that leads with dead space, and it doesn't make a perfectly round channel. It was certainly a big improvement over what we had mm -hmm. in making a bigger channel, but this new device gives us the opportunity to more effectively clean out a vessel. So if I can see the next slide. You can see that with this device, and you see the very dark black dot in the middle of the screen and uh, the ruler that we have in place, we're advancing this through an area of stent. And this allows us to spin this device and make a channel much larger than the hole that we've made in the artery in the first place. Now, in this first case, this patient had a total occlusion of a long segment of stent. And we were able to completely open that up with almost no residual lesion left. We followed that with a drug eluding balloon, which will help to stop the ingrowth of material. And we're very optimistic this is going to be a great long-term outcome. What, uh, when, when you decide to use you know, this new technology that's there, what sort of diagnostic testing does one have to undergo to, to, to see if they're a candidate for sure. this? First thing we like to do is we, we talk to a patient and we make sure their symptoms. And secondly, we measure pressures in the legs. Typically, if you've got good pressures in the legs, you don't need anything done, even if you've got good, uh, uh, even if you have blockages. But this patient could not walk, was starting to develop an ulcer on the bottom of their foot, had incredibly low pressures in the, in the foot, and we then did an ultrasound and it showed the entire stented segment to be occluded. So all of this was done either just with a physical exam or the use of an ultrasound technique from the outside of the body. Okay, so this, this, this form of technology, uh, again, you showed us kind of basically what it is, but it's specifically designed to, to treat PADs as opposed to blockages other in, in the body? That's correct. Th this is really more aimed at opening up instant restenosis. When stents are placed, Stints have really been a wonderful tool. They've allowed us to treat people we couldn't treat in the past. But occasionally, stints will develop ingrowth of tissue, and that obstructs the stent. This is particularly problematic in legs 
un unlike the heart, where we're often in the heart treating very short segments of disease, often in the legs we're treating segments this long. So you have a long stent, a longer yes. stent, if you will, in the legs? Yes, so we have much longer stents, much okay. longer areas of treatment. And this allows us to clean that material out rather than simply squeeze it or try to do something such as that. Okay, very good. Uh, that's, that's very interesting. And as, as you know, you were mentioning there, you guys were the first to perform uh, the previous procedure that you noted there. But I note that this is the fourth time that you specifically have been, I know you're a modest individual, but I think it's just certainly a wonderful accomplishment for yourself, but also for, for the region. Um, it, but this is now the fourth time that you've been the first person in the world to perform a new innovative type of procedure. And uh, I think it speaks not only to, to you know, your uh, uh, credibility in the field, but also that of CIS. And, and I know y'all have continued to make advancements, if you could just speak about that a little bit uh, over the past. Sure. Well, certainly some of the, uh, I think maybe the first thing that was done first in man in HOMA, Dr. Stagg did the first in man popliteal stick that I recall. We did the first in man uh, stent ever placed in acute heart attack patient. I did that in the past during the, the stent trial. At first, it was thought we could not do that, but there was a case that really we had no other option, and this man did well, and that really launched the whole era of how we treat heart attacks now by placing stents. That is now the standard of care worldwide. We placed the first IDEV stent, uh, the first one ever placed in the world we did. The first turbo booster device ever used. We did, in, uh, we did that. I actually did it in Germany, not here, uh, because it was not yet approved here, but I did that study there. And then this is the turbo power. Now, we may have done others as well, but those I know. Those were five things that we did first in man. The very same day that we did this procedure, we also did a procedure called renal denervation. It is a procedure in which we're doing research right now in an effort to better control blood pressure. There, there were studies done in Europe in the past in which uh, by basically burning the nerves that go uh, in, in the kidney artery itself, blood pressure mm. fell. Uh, a subsequent study did not prove that in America. There are many reasons that may have been the case. But the early studies in Germany were incredibly promising. Well, this is a newer device that was uh, made to be quite safe and, and effective. Uh, there's a trial going on right now, and we are involved in that trial. And we actually, in the same day, did the first case that we have done, not the first in the United States, certainly not the first in the world, but the first that we've done. And this is in an effort to better treat people with high blood pressure. And this is a very important thing. When someone has high blood pressure, they have to take a medicine, at least one, often more, every single day of their life. Sometimes they forget. That's mm -hmm. potentially problematic. So imagine if there's a treatment that could potentially uh, treat you to where your blood pressure was con controlled without, you know, having to take those medicines. Now, we need a lot more research to know right. if we're going to get to that, to that uh, end. But certainly it is promising and we're encouraged by it. Let's take a short break and we'll continue visiting with uh, Dr. Craig Walker. Very interesting. And uh, we'll ask him some more questions regarding PAD and also uh, cardiovascular issues as well. Stay with us.